Welcome to TechPub. In today's free concept series, we talk about interfaces. Strange little creatures that aren't really objects, sort of are. A lot of people use them to free up their code. A lot of people don't really know why, so we discuss that today and more. Building and maintaining an application is much like conducting an orchestra in that sometimes our components might lose their tune. We might want to upgrade them, change them out for better performance. Who knows? So we code up something new, stick it back in place, and we're happy again. Our application's singing. Now this kind of thing happens a lot over time. Occasionally, maybe you're reading your favorite magazine. You're reading about some cool framework changes that are coming out, and you decide, I'm going to use that new thing, and you start coding away. Unfortunately, what you end up with is a fancy object, something that didn't quite turn out the way you wanted it to. It reaches out across the framework because it needs certain things. You can't just take what you give it. It's got to have certain things in order for it to run right. We call this high maintenance. High maintenance things over time make your application look, well, rather silly, rather hard to work with. And, uh, well, developers that you work with that might have to maintain your application over time might not be very happy about that. It's what this video is all about. It's about loosening up your application, not building in high maintenance objects. And what we're going to do today is take a look at interfaces and how they can help you do precisely that. For today's example, we'll use my brother's fictional car painting business where he airbrushes some smooth, cool pimp designs on older cars. And as the token geek in my family, well, my brother calls me up one day and says, Hey, I need you to make me an application. Will you do it for free? Thanks, bro. So, I'm sure, why not? That's what I do for my family. And I am going to make him a car painting application. And here it is. This is Bros Paint. This is the uh, console app I'm going to make for my brother to help him run his business. Now, of course, this is going to be highly simplified. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in two ways. First way is going to be the fancy way full of fancy objects, things with interdependencies and so on. And then I'm going to do it the more nimble way, uh, using interfaces. Now, I thought it would be an interesting challenge, but hopefully it'll get the idea across. So let's jump into it. About to start building out my brother's application, and I really just want him to go away. So I'm hoping I can just one-off this application and uh, hand it to him and say, See ya, gotta go. And that's going to lead me into doing some fancy objects. Well, so let's see how that works. So if we go over the requirements, it is that he has a painting business that he paints cars. So we got a car, that's the first thing, and then a painter, that's the second thing. So let's create those objects. And I'm going to do that really quickly here. And the first thing I'm going to add in is a class called car. And the next thing I'm going to add in is a class called painter because a painter is going to paint cars and we'll make these public and in this case I will have a single method in here called paint and then I will take in a car and then I will set it to a new color Ruby all right so that is the method that I need to have so my car needs to have the notion of a color to change so in this case I will create my car and I will create a property called color. We'll just call it current color for lack of better words. All right and yes we'll use that and so now uh, that's all really that's all we really need to do to have this thing work and so what we need to do in here is we just need to say car dot change oops, current color equals new color. Simple pimple. All right we're done believe it or not pretty quick huh pretty good at this painting business. Okay, well, it's demo time. Show my brother how this all works. And uh, we can just kick up a new car. Oops, car equals new car. And let's set the current color of the car to be, oh, how about color dot dim gray? The dingy dim gray. And we'll output that to the console. Then we want our painter to come into play here new painter and we want him to paint the car and so we'll just say painter dot paint oops and so we pass in our car and then we change it to oh how about Dodger blue go Dodgers from Los Angeles sorry okay so then we're gonna just output this car has been painted 
2. And then we'll drop this thing down, car.currentColor, good. And then we'll leave the console up so we can see what's happened. Okay, if we run this, great. Car is dim gray, and car has been painted to Dodger Blue. Well, now that is exciting. Everything works. My brother is jumping up and down. Woohoo! And he runs off, takes the application with him, and we're all happy. Well, wouldn't you know it, within six months, the guy comes back. He's got a load of changes for me. Yippee. Hey, you're pretty good at what you do, man. You know, I'm digging this application. You think you can, uh, think you can make me something for a truck? You think you can handle that? Believe it or not, that's exactly the way my brother sounds. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I can handle that, I think. So what we want to do now is we want to have the ability for a painter to paint a car and a truck. Let's start here with the notion of a truck. Um, pop that in. And a truck should probably have the same thing as a car. Now, if your object-oriented senses are going off, well, that's good. They should. Uh, what we can probably do here is an inheritance scheme. And for the sake of brevity, I am just going to put in a class here and call it vehicle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this property here. And yes, we're going to do that. And so a truck is a vehicle. Goody gumdrops. And so is a car. Okay, and then we got to go back into our program here. And instead of saying, uh, in, or excuse me, got to go back to our painter. And instead of saying car, what we need to do is say vehicle, because vehicle now has the base property of current color. And goody, goody, goody. So now we should be able to change this to truck. And we can now run this, and we can change the color of a truck. There we go. Yippee. Car is color dim gray. Hmm. Interesting. So now we've got to change this. Well, just we'll say vehicle. Okay. All right. So, if you noticed all my cutting and pasting and moving around of code, that is precisely the point I'm trying to make. Uh, that it to change this application to handle this new requirement, I had to go in and I literally had to change my car to be a vehicle. I had to change my truck or add the notion of a truck to be a vehicle. I had to add the class vehicle. I had to come in here and change my painter to handle vehicle. So I had to touch just about everything. This is what they call the ripple effect. This is what makes an application change uh, high maintenance. So we could have gotten around this. Uh, we don't need to be passing this class in explicitly. This is violating what's known as interface segregation principle, or the idea that your classes don't really need to be exhibitionists uh, in order to be used. You don't need to actually pass in the entire class. You just need to pass in the abilities, or kind of the small things. Had we done it that way, it would have been a lot different. To show you what I mean, let's recode this thing using ISP. So let's try this again, except this time we will not use fancy code, and we'll keep our classes from uh, being exhibitionists and passing themselves around when they don't really need to. Okay, well, let's revisit our business proposal here, and that is we are building an application for my brother who paints cars, and then we'll add this to it, that in the future we don't know what he's going to paint. It could be anything. So uh, the first thing we need to do is to describe the ability. That's what an interface does. It describes an ability. Uh, we need, so we're going to use an interface for that. And we need to describe something that can have its color changed. So we'll call it iPaintable. And what this little interface is simply going to do is it's going to describe two things. It's going to describe a current color, and it's going to provide a way of changing it. So in this case, I will simply type in color. OK, we have that. And next up, we want to implement some sort of method uh, called change color. And that is going to take in a color. And that's that. And this can't be public because this is simply an interface. OK, there is no body to this method. It is just a signature, and that's exactly what an interface does. It's a contract. It says any object that's going to implement this is going to have to implement these methods. Now, if you want to be effective at using interfaces, you want to pay attention to the segregation principle. Uh, not only does it say, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're passing around interfaces and not objects, but it also says those interfaces should be the smallest possible signature that you can possibly make it. If you get more than, say, five to seven methods on an interface, think about having two. 
so we can talk about that in another video. So right now we have iPaintable and again I'm going to add in another class and we'll call it Painter. So the painter is going to do as he did before, paint. Except in this case he's not going to take a vehicle or a car, he's going to take an iPaintable. And what he's going to do with that is simply change the color. And oops, I forgot to pass in a color. And then we're going to change the color here to new color. All right, that's all we need to do. So now if we want to implement a car, we sure can. We could put in a class called car, and we can set this thing to be iPaintable. Now when you do this, Visual Studio is going to pop up some red squiggly lines. It's going to say, hey, you know, you've implemented this interface here, but you don't have any code uh, to support the contract that is required for this interface. So if you want to do this in Visual Studio, just implement interface, boom. All righty. So I'm going to remove these regions. A little bit annoying. This is also annoying. So all we need to do is we need to say current color equals color. Okay, what have we bought ourselves? Well, let's go back and see. We'll do the same code here. We can new up a car. And now the painter is going to paint the car. Oops, and I need to go back here and make this method public. How many times a day do you do that? I do that a lot. I know that ReSharper could have done that for me, but whatever. Alrighty, so in this case, we just need to pass in the item, which is the car. Car implements iPaintable, so we can pass it as an argument. It's one of the main ideas behind using interfaces instead of actual objects. We are passing the object, but we're not necessarily passing it. We are passing its ability. That's the important thing to understand here, because the receiving code, which in this case is the painter, doesn't care. It shouldn't care. Uh, we are shielding it from all the knowledge of this item. So we can change this item as we need to. All we're doing is passing the ability. That's the whole point. Okay, well now what we want to do is pass in Dodger Blue. Go Dodgers! And then we are going to output this again, and one more time we're going to do read line. Okay, well there we have our code. It is updated. It doesn't look that much different, does it? In fact, this is almost exactly the same code we had before. Place where it's different is in our painter class. Painter doesn't know what's calling it. I'll show you why that matters in a second, but first let's make sure this works. Run the console, great. That works exactly as it's expected to. Well now your brother comes to you and says, hey man, nice car, nice or nice application, good job. Hey, thanks. And then he tells you, well, I want to I want to be able to paint trucks, okay? All right. So now what we can do is we simply add this in, and this is the entire point of doing ISP. Well, not the entire point, but one of the main points of it. We can then just implement iPaintable on a truck. Now, notice this is why we want this interface to be small. Because all it, we need to do to use this thing, oops, go there. All we need to do to use this thing is to implement a property and a single method. You really don't want to impose too many restrictions on using your interface. The lighter it is, the easier it will be to use in the future. So I'm just going to reuse some code out of my car class here. We'll just drop this back down in right here. There we go. Okay, I didn't have to touch anything else. I just created my truck class. So up here, I can simply change this to truck. And I had, didn't have to touch the painter at all, didn't have to tell him what to do. Great. If I want to paint houses, I sure can. I can come in here and I can add a new class called, as you guessed it, house. And I can once again copy and paste in there. Yes, I want to do that. I'll make this public. Of course, we want to set this as iPaintable. And now when we run this, we have now just painted a house. So you can see as I add things in, as I expand this application, I'm not touching any other classes. I don't have to change any other classes. All I'm doing is implementing an interface. I can have all the custom logic I want in here. I just have to make sure this interface is honored. And then I can use this in calling code or consuming code. Uh, so you can see how this is freeing things up and not making our application fancy. Okay, well, if you have any questions about this, you can send me an email, rob at techpub.com, or you can leave a comment below. Thank you.